What's up everyone, Ben here at Fit Bike Co. Today we're gonna teach you how to build a complete bike out of the box. We always recommend that you go to a bike shop and have your bike assembled by a professional mechanic, but we also understand that you can't always do that. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do this at home with just the bare essentials. All right, so these are the basic tools you're gonna need to build this bike. Moving from left to right, we've got something to cut open the box, and then most importantly are gonna be your Allen wrenches. As most important is the six mil, uh, but we do have some five millimeter for the brakes and a couple other things. Uh, so this one is a 17 mil deep socket and then we also have a 19 mil for the rear axle. We've got some grease here because we are gonna be greasing every single thread on this bike. Not everybody has a pedal wrench, so an adjustable wrench is gonna work just fine on this one. And then we've got a 13 mil for the brakes, a pump for the tires, a floor pump or hand pump works just fine. And then we also have a spoke wrench right here. So this might be a little bit too advanced for some of you guys, uh, so if you need help replacing spokes or truing your wheels, we do recommend that you just go to your local bike shop. They'll be able to help you out with that. Uh, but just for getting started, this is everything you're going to need. All right, so step one, we want to get this box open. You need something to cut these little yellow straps with. And then make sure the logo of the box is facing upright. It makes this whole thing easier. This piece should just pull apart. Just some simple staples on the top. The bottom is glued, so that's why you want to make sure the box is upright. So the seat's gonna be on top. Got the whole bulk of the bike right here. And then always check there's gonna be a box with a bunch of parts. So we just got the bike out of the box. The next step is gonna be to take the front wheel off. It's gonna be zip tied to the bike. So you're gonna want something to cut it off with. So you're gonna wanna just take most of these off. You can just rip them off by hand. It should be pretty easy. Uh, anything with a zip tie, you just wanna cut that off. All right, so once all the packing materials are off, we're gonna start getting the bars on. They're gonna come with a brake cable on them, so it's always the easiest thing to do next. That way you don't have this just dangling here by the cable. And I'm gonna be using the metric Allen wrenches. So you're gonna need a six millimeter, which is this one. And you wanna take all the bolts out of the stem. And we actually recommend that you grease every single thread too. It's gonna help just keep things nice and snug. Um, you should really grease every single thread that's on your bike too. It keeps things from making creaking sounds and just overall just makes things last a little bit better. All right, so important thing too is if you're gonna keep the brakes on the bike, wanna have the cable in the right spot. So we have the cable going across the box of the bar and over to the other side of the bike. And then we're gonna put this in the stem where the knurling is even. So you can actually line it up. The knurling, it's that uh, textured part of the bar. It's gonna line up with the edges of the stem. So that way your handlebars are nice and straight. And then we're gonna put these back in while keeping the bar nice and centered. Uh, I'd like to put them in just finger tight uh, until all the bolts are evenly in there and you can tell that they're going in nice and smooth. Don't want to cross thread anything. Um, so it should feel like everything's going in very, very smoothly. And once they're in enough, we're gonna put them in kind of lightly. Again, don't tighten it down too much with the wrench because that's gonna come later. And so you're gonna tighten this just enough that you can still move your bars around because we're gonna try and get them in the right spot. I always recommend if you're new to riding, just putting your bars parallel with your forks. So when you look at the bike sideways, this should be parallel with this. Once you've determined that your bars are in the right spot, uh, this is actually pretty important is how you tighten down your stem bolts. So you're gonna wanna, especially with this kind of front load stem or really any complete bike stem, you wanna make sure that there's the same amount of space between the cap, the front cap of the stem and the body of the stem, top and bottom. So that means we're gonna tighten the bolts evenly. So I'm gonna start with this one here and then I'm gonna go diagonal and that's gonna keep me tightening everything evenly the whole time. So I'm gonna go from this one, I'm gonna switch over to this one. You don't wanna just tighten the, all the top down at the same time or both of the bottom bolts down at the same time because then your cap might get a little bit crooked. And then I'm gonna switch now to this one and then I'm just gonna run back through it again, just make sure everything's getting nice and tight. This is something, especially with a new bike, you don't want your bars to move, so you wanna make sure you're getting your stem nice and tight. You don't wanna over tighten to the point that you start you know, flexing the front of your stem, but definitely tight enough that your bars aren't gonna move. All right, so right now I'm gonna put the front wheel in, and I actually like doing this too, just because it makes me get it in nice and evenly, um, but I'm gonna turn the bike upside down, and then, so the front wheel, 
comes with these little uh, little washers with a little hook on them, and those are actually going to fit into the fork. Loosen these axle nuts a bit, and all of our tires have a directional tread, with the exception of the FU tires on the signature models. So this one, you're going to want to look, it kind of creates an arrow with the tread. So the FIT here on the side is going to create an arrow, and you're going to want it to spin in the direction of the arrow. And you can also always look at the back tire too. So the back tire is going to be put in correctly, and I'm just trying to have these matched so I make sure that the tread's going in the same direction. And so now I'm going to drop this in. Our wheels, right out of the box, they come with this little washer, and it's going to hook into the cutout on the fork right there. And then I'm just going to finger tighten these first, make sure everything is in place. And now you're going to need your deep socket wrench. So go ahead and make sure this one's nice and tight. And then sometimes I like to just push down on the wheel while I'm tightening it too. That means it won't lift up at all and get crooked. So now I've got this nice and tight on both sides. So now we're going to air up the tire. Uh, these do come slightly deflated, so it's pretty low right now. So uh, you can always check the, uh, the sidewall of your tire too to see what you should fill it up to. This one says max 65, so you can put safely probably anywhere from like 40 to 65 in there, depending on your, your preference. And while you're at it, you can also pump up the back tire. This one comes with a one-piece seat combo, so this one's really easy to install. There is a minimum insertion line in here. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see there's these little riveted lines here. And so what that means is you don't want to have these exposed. So you want to make sure the seat goes in at least far enough that these are level with the clamp. Now that you got your seat and your bars on, uh, we're going to flip the bike over and we're going to put the pedals on and then we're going to dial the brakes in and then we're almost done. So you can always back pedal as you're putting these pedals in and that's going to be the direction that they tighten. And then once it starts to get in there, then you're going to grab a pedal wrench or adjustable wrench depending on what you have. Uh, always recommend using a proper pedal wrench. And then we're going to put it in the rest of the way. Just continue to back pedal until it gets nice and snug. And then just make sure you get this nice and tight. Now we're gonna do the other side. Same deal, check, this one's got an R on it. So right hand of the crank set. And then we're just gonna back pedal it as it goes in there nice and smoothly. And then once it gets a little bit tighter, grab your wrench and do it the rest of the way. And there you go, pedals are in. And next we're just gonna double check that the brakes are where we like them. All of, almost all of our bikes come with the option of removing the brakes. A lot of them have removable mounts. Uh, we understand most of you guys want to ride brakeless, but uh, today we're going to ride this thing with the brakes and just uh, so we'll get this all set up for that. So you're going to want to check. You can always grab the lever and just make sure everything is pulling. So you're going to want to make sure there's an even amount of space between the brake pads and the rim on both sides. You can always just check that, make sure it's pulling and that nothing is rubbing too. Um, so you can always just spin that wheel. See, not, not touching the, the brake pads. Brakes are working. So you can also adjust the brake lever to make sure that it's in the right spot for you. And this one is gonna be a five millimeter bolt. So first time we're changing from that six mil. Uh, but if you do need to adjust anything, you're gonna play with these tension springs here. Um, so if you want to make anything tighter or looser, you're gonna take your Allen wrench. This one's gonna be a five millimeter. And this is going to loosen up your whole brake, and then you're going to get a wrench here to adjust it. So if I want to take some tension out of the brake, loosen this, and then turning towards the tire that way is going to let up on some tension. You're going to see the whole brake is going to shift that way. But this right here is going to adjust the spring. It's going to make it either easier or harder to pull, or it's going to pull one arm away from the rim if they come uneven out of the box. So once you get your brakes all dialed in, all of our bikes come with this cool little reusable Velcro cable strap. I always like to put mine kind of near the head tube. That just keeps your cable out of the way. It's like that. Brakes are dialed in. This is exactly what your bike should look like with the brakes, where the cable is not flopping around too much. If you put it too far away here, you can get in the way. So I like to keep everything nice and tight up towards the front. So for those of you who want to ride pegless, uh, you are all ready to go out the door and ride. Uh, this is everything you need. The brakes are good. Make sure everything on here is nice and tight. Make sure everything's greased. 
um, and everything is just where you like it. So the bike should look something like this. Um, our bikes do come with some other stuff. Uh, so right now we're gonna walk you through how to put some pegs on. Uh, all of our STRs come with four pegs. All of our pegs are gonna come either 14 millimeter or a 3 8 opening. Uh, the 14 is for the back, the 3 8 is for the front. So we're gonna do the front wheel right now. So you can just go ahead and grab your smaller of the two pegs. Take off your front axle nut. And if you're gonna be rocking the pegless setup, you can actually take this little washer out because uh, now your peg is gonna serve as the washer itself, so you don't need anything else in there. So just slide the peg all the way on the axle till it touches your fork. Put the nut in the socket. And you're gonna wanna go slow here to make sure you don't do any cross-threading. Again, everything should go on nice and smooth. So it might take you a second to get everything situated. And then go ahead and once it's going on nice and smooth, tighten it all the way down. And then make sure it's nice and tight here. Now, once you guys get that front peg on, now I'm gonna do the back peg. You're gonna grab the peg with the larger opening and you're also gonna to need to switch over to a 19 millimeter socket for this particular bike because this uses a larger back axle. And then just like the front, you're gonna slide this washer off because the peg is now gonna serve as the washer. So peg directly against the dropout, axle nut in your 19 millimeter socket and tighten this thing down. And you're gonna make sure that this one's pretty tight as well. You don't want your back wheel to slip because it's not tight enough. So nice and snug on there. Kind of lean into the wrench when you're tightening it. And you are good. All right, so after you guys ride your bikes for about like a month or so, it could be faster, your spokes are gonna loosen up. Uh, it's totally natural and you're gonna be able to kind of move them around a little bit with your fingers. So I'm gonna show you the very basics of truing a wheel and this is without a truing stand. Uh, so again, bike shop number one, but if you can't, do it at home like this. Uh, so you're gonna grab your spoke wrench and I always like to start right at the valve stem. Uh, it's always like a good reference point. Um, and so I'm gonna grab the first spoke there and assuming this is really loose, uh, just do kind of a small turn, maybe like a quarter of a turn with the spoke wrench. And assuming that your wheel is pretty good uh, as far as being trued side to side, um, I'm just gonna go and skip every third spoke. So I'm gonna grab this one, and then I'm gonna skip over to this one. So that way you're tensioning the wheel evenly all the way around. If you just tighten everything in a row, uh, you can give your wheel a hop. So this way, everything stays even. So I'm gonna skip, so I'm gonna go this one, tighten it a little bit, assuming it's loose, and skip one, two, here's the third. Skip one, two, tighten this one. Skip one, two, tighten that one. We're gonna go all the way around the rim and then you're gonna do this a few times because you're gonna notice that this doesn't tighten every single spoke. So now we're back to the one we started on. Now I'm gonna go to the next spoke. So none of these have been touched yet. So we're gonna go to this spoke right here. We're gonna tighten it, quarter turn. Skip one, two, tighten this one. Skip one, two, that one. So now we're just alternating every time. Uh, thanks for watching the video. For more info on our bikes or parts, check out fitbikeco.com. To see them in action, go to Instagram and follow at fitbikeco. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel and everything else we got.